Hello and welcome to this video of Up Cairnamoun and Up Drum Tochty Road. Enjoy. Now, the reason I'm going to do the next thing is because I wasn't going to do the first thing, and that's go up from Feta Cairn to Cairnamoun. Because I'm heading the right way until I turned around on the car park and went the other way. The reason will become clear in a second when I say, Hi, this is Feta Care and I wanted to show it to you, I suppose. Hi, this is Feta Cairn. You might see an arch in front of you. And a monument. And a sign over there saying Feta Cairn, Cairn Amount, Clattering Brig, Strachan and Bankery. The B794. Bonnie Wee Village, not a big village, Feta Cairn, but worth a trip. And it's worth coming this way to go up Cairn the Mount. There's not much snow, you, you might catch a glimpse of snow up on the mountains, but there's no much now, if, if any, left on the lower land here. Now this is not yet driving up to Cairn the Mount. You'll pass a, a wee cafe on the left, well a big cafe, called the Clattering Brig, which means the noisy bridge. And then you'll go over a bridge which isn't, isn't it clattering, it's not noisy. And then you start the climb up Cairn the Mount. When we get up the top, I'll pull into the car park there. That is not the Cairn at the Cairn the Mount. You have to go on about another 200 yards and there is actually a cairn and probably a higher view. It's just that I prefer the view from this car park, uh, the first one. But it's each to their own. I'm just letting you know about it. That's all. Well, cold dish. It's six degrees. That's centigrade. Uh, so it's a positive heat wave to the locals. <laughs> just that I'm, I moved away many years ago to warmer climbs so I only come back three weeks a year but I call it my freezer weeks <laughs> I look out the comms the, wo the woolly underwear the thermals as they call them the thermals and then I don them I bring a couple of three pairs, so I've got a pair for every week. Cleanliness is next to godliness, so they say. Now here's a, a lovely wee bridge. Anything coming the other way, you hit them. But what the heck? This is the Scottish countryside. Now there's a bit of history to Cairn Amount, but also there's a wee place near there called from Tochte, which I'm going to do a separate video of, because it's got a grand wee church called St. Palladius. I didn't even know St. Pal had a Ladius, but that's how it goes. Anyway, Cairn Mount itself's got a bit of history, and because it's a fair bit of history, I've put it in the title, somewhere up at the top of the video, uh, a bit of reading. It's not joined up right, and so everybody should be able to read it fairly well. I just realised that sounded a bit condescending, and it was meant to be funny. Which just goes to show what a funny sense of humour some of us have got. Especially me. Anyway, it's my video. If I want to make it sound condescending, that's down to me. If you like the video, you can tell everybody. See, hey, you've got to go and see this video. This guy is great. On the other hand, if you don't like the video, just go out, get lost, go away. Don't say nothing. Nobody likes to be told they're useless. <laughs> I've had it all my life, so it's no surprise. But just don't tell anybody. 
If you can't say a good word about someone, shut your gob. That's what my mother used to say. That means close your mouth. Shut your gob's a Scottish saying. Fuck it quick, please. <laughs> that was condescending as well. <laughs> anyway, we're not at the Clattering Brig yet, but I know we're getting close. Because I remember this road from a year ago. I've stopped talking because I'm looking around me and being a block, I can't multi- Oh, look at that falcon. Just flew straight across the, our front there. I, being a block, I cannot multitask. I can either scratch my nose and talk, or talk and no scratch my head. So you, you, when I look about me, I have to concentrate. Because don't forget, I'm driving at the same time. And these people coming towards me just do not appreciate you running into them and saying, oops, sorry. <laughs> anyway, that's the mountains up ahead. You can see them at the top end of the video here. I'm swinging around because there's potholes in the road. And it's easier to avoid them than it is to go in them and smash your wheel or your tyre. Because the councils up here don't spend anything on the roads at all. Nothing. The patch and repair and the patch falls out the next week. So that's how it works up here. The powers that be seem to think everybody still uses a pony and cart. So they don't bother repairing the roads too much. It's only tourists and locals that use it and they don't count. It's rather short-sighted because the locals have to live here and the tourists pay for things with whatever they spend. Oh, look at that view. That road over to the right there is the Drum Tochte. I'll go slow here. This is this, the beginning. Now, on your left, there's a cafe up that hill there. There's a cafe called the Clattering Brig. And you can see the notice in the upper car park. And there it is there, a licensed tea room. And as far as I'm concerned, anybody that has alcohol up here and tries to drive anywhere is a raving lunatic and deserves all they get if they get caught or killed. Right, off we go. To the right is Trum Tochte and Ochin Blay. And we are now on the run up the clattering brick. No, the clattering big, no, no, I'll get it right in a minute. We can on the run up the Cairn Mount. I got it right, there you go. And it's a lovely, lovely run. A few sort of blindish corners, they're not too bad. And if there's nothing on the road, you can cut the corner and get your foot down. Any police officers watching, I do not go above 25 mile an hour, no matter how fast it looks on the video.
So we'll away back down Cairn Amount. As you do. I'll try and give you a bit of a running commentary. As we go along. Cairn Amount itself's got a fair bit of history. It's no its original name. But somewhere in the title or up near the title of this video I'll have put a Wikipedia explanation which I copy pasted. Sorry Wikipedia, but at least I've said who did it. <laughs> uh, I'll copy paste it in because it's quite interesting. Now you can see it's a fair run down and one does go rather fast but I'm not going over 20 mile an hour, Rossifer. I promise. I might, have speeded, I might have speeded the video up in places to make it look as though I was doing 150, but I'm not really. I'm stupid, but I'm no mad, you know what I mean? Now I've got an Audi behind me that's probably both stupid and mad, because he wants to come past. I think that's pretty cool of him. There he goes. F off. <laughs> Boom. He's a man in a hurry. Now he was doing about 90, officer. I know that because I was doing a wee bit more than 20. But there you go. He's probably local and he sees this, he sees all this scenery twice a day and he's sick of the sight of it. You, know, you can see the snow poles at the side. You cannot come up and down here every day. It's not possible. Those black and white markers to your right hand side are snow poles. The red ones, if you can see no red when you're coming down here, you're not on the road. You're doing the bit ditch somewhere. Anyway. Over to your left, yeah, you just maybe caught a glimpse of it in the video. You can always reverse the video or stop it. It's a place called Drumtochte. A beautiful castle, great wedding venue. But they have a church there called St. Palladius. It's, it's just a very nice wee church. I've been there before and I've shot a few stills there but I'm pretty sure I've never done a video there but I have done a video of this run down here and it was some years ago but you see that the bends are a bit wicked look Ooh, I love it anyway that building down there in the bottom is the Clattering Brig Cafe now I don't know it's opening hours, if it's open I'm going in for a brew, if it's not opening, yeah, I'm not going in for a brew. Now the real clattering brig is to the left here, because this stone one hasn't clattered for years. <laughs> opening hours, 10 till 4 and it's 10 past 9, right, I'm not going in. Now that is the clattering brig up there. And the vehicles over there are workmen cutting the trees up there, so... Anyway, we'll go a drive up the glen. That's... Turn right here. And Glen Drumtochte. Now you can see the wee river that goes across here and it floods. And this wee bridge to your right clatters. The one to your left just has water running under it. And the glens on the left lead not to Glen Drumtochte. I emphasise it because no everybody can get their tongue around all the ox and the ix in, in the local language, <laughs> which is Scottish. <laughs> it's no Gaelic, but there you go. That's a wee bit of Gaelic for you. Right. It actually means, hello, how are you, and are you going to school tomorrow? <laughs> but that's the only bit I remember from my Gaelic lessons at school. I went to a school in Glasgow that insisted you learn Gaelic and Latin. And being as 
one is a dead language and the other one's no far off dead. Um, uh, they've been handy, I suppose. The Gaelic's a bit of a, a showstopper sometimes, and the Latin's helpful for English, so there you go. I'm not as daft as I look, and I look quite daft, really. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, I've got a funny microphone. I'm, I'm no... What can I say? I have to sync this speech with a video. And to do that, I have to go clap my hands, and then I line up the claps in audio with the claps on the visual, and oh, it's very high-tech stuff. But what I'm trying to say is the wee microphone that I'm using is a, like a lavalier. That means it's a fancy name for pin to your shirt tails or pin to your neck or something. And I made it myself. It's a, a stereo one, which means it's marked right and left. So if I wobble, wobble my head about, my voice comes at you from different directions. <laughs> That's how it should be. And if I go... It means I've gone off the edge and I'm sinking in the water down there. <laughs> Excuse my cough, but it's not the cough that carries you off, it's the coffin they carry you off in. Right. Bonny water to the right there. Just a loch, no, a river running in and out. Don't know the name, I don't know any history for up here, apart from what I've read on Drum Tochty. And I did shoot the Drum Tochty Highland Games once, again, three or four years ago. So, I've definitely been here before. this lovely countryside, Nehelen coos, Nehelen cattle, well none that I've seen, because it's all sheep. Sheep and lambs everywhere. The white bits you can see to the edges under the sheep, that's still snow line on the forest line, where it doesn't get the sun. Yes, the sun does shine sometimes in Scotland. Never mind what the weather forecasters tell you. It can be beautiful here. Today it's four degrees. Now to the locals, that's a heat wave. To me, nah, that's freezing. We're talking here thermals, two pair of thick socks, boots, big heavy waterproof hot jacket, furry bonnet, <laughs> gloves. And that's just in the car with the heat on. <laughs> right. Where are we? Oh, Highland Cow, I think. I think to the left. You can't see it, I'm not moving the camera. Aye, Highland Cow, I can tell with the horns. Big long horns. Uh. So I stopped and I walked back because there's a Highland cow trying to do the naughties with a Highland bull. So I think she's in the mood and he's no. He's a big lad, the black one. And she's no bothered, but she's only wee, isn't she? I mean, compared to him, he's, he's quite bulky. Not the biggest uh, ones I've seen, but there may be a particular strainer. Highland cattle that I'm not uh, familiar with. Anyway, that's about the end. I'm not going any further with this. It's 20 minutes long, so I hope you've enjoyed it. Bye.